Hey guys, good morning. So today what I'm working on is the P48 project, which is our 1948 Chevy 3100. And I'm finishing up some details on the Helix IFS conversion. Um, one of the things that was recommended when installing one of these uh, Mustang II IFSs in the front, um, especially the Helix kit, is to support the rear of the lower control arm. Uh, the mounting boss is kind of, uh, it's about three, four inches long and it just kind of hangs off the back of the cross member. And under braking stress, you know, you're putting a lot of, lot of force down on the front end under high, high speed braking. And uh, they recommend, um, specifically El Polaco on the ham, uh, who builds a lot of Mustang two front suspensions, recommends supporting that rear boss so that the rear of the control arm isn't in single shear and just hanging out in space. So uh, I've covered that in previous videos while I was putting this front end together that I was going to support that with a with an additional tab that's going to weld onto the frame. And um, so I've got a rough drawing of of my tab and taken some, some dimensions off of the frame. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, build that out of cardboard um, and, and test it up and make sure my fits are all correct and then cut it out of some 3 16 plate and weld it in. Uh, what was suggested is that you just run a hole through the back of it that's the same size as the bolt that the lower control arm pivots on. And I'm going to take that a step further because I've measured the bolt and I don't quite have enough, um, enough length on the bolt to be comfortable putting a bracket against that and taking up some of the thread length. Uh, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to punch a hole in it in the end of the bracket, slide it over the boss, clean up the end of the boss, slide the bracket over it or the tab over it, and, uh, and then fully weld it on both sides um, to the boss. So that way I'm not using up any of the length of the pivot bolt for the lower control arm. And uh, I think it's just going to be cleaner, uh, safer, and the proper way to do it. I'm going to have to do a little trimming because there's some gussets on the uh, on that boss that are going to need to be trimmed back just a little bit uh, so that I can have room to slide this tab over the end of the boss. But I think in the end it's it's the right way to do it. Uh, it takes a little more work. I've got to go pick up a, a hole saw uh, to do the job. But uh, I think uh, I think that's, you know, I'm going to feel much more confident knowing that the front suspension on this truck is solid. Um, after doing that that fab work. So I've got my dimensions. I'm going to go ahead and transfer them all to cardboard here, cut this out, test fit it, make sure everything fits and clears and my angles are right, and then uh, transfer uh, that template onto some 3 16 plate, uh, punch the holes in it, cut it out with my uh, angle grinders, and uh, try and make a tab that looks decent. I'll uh, make two of them, one for each side of course. Uh, clean it up, weld it into the frame, weld it to the boss on the back of the IFS uh, cross member and then um, we'll be good to go and uh, this front end will be able to take uh, all the braking stress that we can throw at it. So I'm going to set you guys up over here so you can watch me make this template so that if you're doing a Helix IFS conversion you can uh, or IFS install you can uh, uh, make the same kind of thing uh, you know it's it takes a small amount of plate a little bit of time to fabricate and I think it's uh, it's a huge improvement to the front suspension that's already pretty good. Pretty satisfied with the components and the, the uh, quality of the welds and the quality of the materials that are used. But I think this is an improvement that could be made and there's um, no better time to do this uh, extra work and this fab work than now while I have uh, uh, the truck in pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and whip that whip this part up. Uh, I'm going to set you guys up so you can watch me make the template. Well, we're going to test fit it and then I'm going to cut it out of some steel and weld it in. Alright, so to start uh, with laying out this bracket, uh, I've taken my true angle angle finder here, put that up against the inside of the frame rail, and uh, aligned a center line on the other leg uh, straight through the center of our mounting boss. So I'm going to transfer that dimension here onto our uh, piece of cardboard here for our template and start laying out the bracket and where my holes need to go. So our frame rails here. So this will weld into the frame rail. 
frame rail is about two and a half inches, so we'll have a little bit, a uh, little bit more frame than we've got bracket. That's fine. That'll give us a good weld surface there, probably seven inches per side, uh, and a good amount of weld surface around that boss. So we should be, uh, we should be in good shape. And what I've done is slip the pivot bolt through the lower control arm mounting uh, lug or mounting boss uh, that runs directly through the cross member. This boss is pretty substantial. It's inch and three sixteenths, and the wall thickness is probably three sixteenths as well. It's a five eighths bolt, so whatever the math works out on that. Um, the front part of the mounting boss, where the front section of the lower control arm would mount, uh, is very short. It's probably about an inch long, and uh, not under a lot of a lot of stress. But the rear section of this boss is about three inches long, and and under heavy braking could bend or deflect slightly, especially if you're braking hard into a corner and you hit a pothole and you have a huge impact force that comes up against that control arm. It's possible that this rear boss could bend and deflect and twist the cross member and cause a crack. So that's why we're going to support the end of this um, and give it, give it some extra support into the frame, tie it into the frame. Now, my plan is I'm going to hole saw this, this end of the tab so that this tab will slip over the mounting boss. So I'm going to trim back the gussets here a little bit and uh, give myself probably about a half of an inch of clearance and slip this tab over the mounting boss. But for now, I'm just going to check my center line and make sure that uh, our bracket angle is correct on the frame and that we're on center with the bolt. And then that tells me that I can transfer these dimensions to steel and uh, punch that hole with the hole saw and it'll slip over our mounting boss and be on center. So when I weld this in, I'm gonna make sure it's 90 and parallel with the, uh, with the vertical legs on our IFS cross member here so that they're all in parallel. All right guys, so I got my uh, tabs cut out here that are gonna weld into the frame and support uh, the rear mounting boss on that IFS cross member for our Mustang II conversion. Um, I had to use my angle grinders, you know, uh, and a hole saw to make them. It's not the uh, most advanced way to build a bracket. Um, you know, it sure would be nice to uh, be able to sit back and sip some coffee while a CNC machine cuts your parts out for you, but um, you know, I don't have that luxury, and uh, that's all right. It's not so much the tools, it's what you do with the tools you have. And uh, I seem to get by pretty good with uh, some hole saws and a couple angle grinders. So uh, we'll see, I guess, when this gets done, right? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start prepping the frame out where I need to weld these in. Um, I've got to grind back the mounting boss gussets that are on the uh, Helix Mustang 2 IFS cross member and uh, grind those gussets back a little bit so our hole will fit over uh, over the, the boss there and prep it for welding and then I'm going to uh, get these into position, tack them up and uh, if everything looks good and symmetrical side to side then I'll go ahead and burn them in Alright guys, so I got the tabs fitted uh, onto the rear mounting bosses of the Helix IFS conversion uh, for the lower control arms. And I'm ready to tack them into place. I got the old Miller 211 running over here ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and tack these in and uh, tack in both sides. Mount up the control arms, see how everything fits and then burn them in. Uh, 
I got the tabs tacked into place. Um, I'm not going to weld them until I get the motor out. I've got a lot of finish welding to do once I can get this motor out of the way. It's uh, difficult at best to work around a, an installed motor. So if you're doing, uh, if you're planning to do this IFS conversion, do as much of this prep work ahead of time as you can. Um, get those tabs installed before you mount the motor because once once that's in the way, it makes it really hard. But they uh, they look good. They fit well. Uh, they're symmetrical. So I've just got them tacked into place here for now. Um, let me see if I can get some light under here. So I've just got them tacked into place here for now. Um, once I get the motor out, I'll go ahead and burn this in. I just didn't want to try and weld it out of position and maybe mess up this ceiling, this uh, mounting surface for the bushing on the rear of the lower control arm. So I thought it was best just to tack them in, get get a good good solid tacks on it, so I can put the suspension back together, and I will deal with the welding uh, when I when I can get the motor out of the way. So I'm pretty happy to get those done. Uh, it's something I wanted to do. Um, since we uh, decided to go with this front suspension, I you know it's a satisfying mod to do because you know you take an already good suspension uh, that has a has a weak point and you solve the weak point and you know that you've addressed it correctly. So um, I, I like doing those kinds of mods. I don't much like laying on the ground throwing sparks in my own face, but um, you know sometimes that goes along with the uh, with the job. Uh, there is one other thing I want to do on this uh, Helix IFS uh, front cross member when I get the motor out and do all my finish welding. Um, I'm going to box in the open end of the cross member on both sides. So this area here that's open, I think would just, uh, it'll just finish off, you know, the cross member installation and look a lot better if this is closed. So I'll come down with a piece of plate and then across and wrap this corner with another piece of plate. And that way, you know, everything will be closed in, sealed up. You won't get leaves and mice and road rocks stuck in there. It'll be all nice and tight and closed up. Uh, while I was in here with the grinder, I went ahead and re-radiused these gussets. Since we really don't need the gussets with, uh, with the, the new gusset that we've already added here, this, this uh, support tab, I just went ahead and trimmed them back and uh, cleaned them up a little bit so that they kind of blend in a little better. And I made both sides match. Alright guys, that pretty much wraps it up for me today for the P48 project. Um, I think we made a good modification today. I think a, a good safety improvement uh, strengthened that front end, took the flex out of that lower control arm boss, which, you know, uh, even, even if, it didn't, uh, if it didn't have flex, uh, I still feel better about it uh, being gusseted and having that extra support tab on the end of it. Uh, just a safer front suspension. I think it really should be packaged that way from Helix. So uh, you saw me draw up my cardboard template here, my fancy uh, fancy template for my plasma plasma hand and uh, cut these out with my angle grinder cut off disc out of some quarter inch plate I took an inch and a quarter hole saw and uh, punched the holes here in the end to fit over those mounting bosses uh, on the back of the cross member uh, the bosses themselves are three and a quarter inches long from the back of the IFS cross member and uh, I went ahead and mounted uh, these tabs uh, at two and a half inches from the from the back of the IFS cross member um, I think that's a good location it, it uh, keeps the keeps the gusset away from the ceiling sur or the mounting surface on the back of the uh, uh, lower control arm uh, so that you keep that nice and square and straight and uh, don't put any boogers on that I had done that before I mounted the motor back into place though because laying on your back uh, you know, covered in covered in grinding flash and slag and hot sparks is uh, not a whole lot of fun. But um, I was able to get it done and um, get those tabs tacked into place, and I will get those fully welded in um, later on down the road when I pull the motor out for welding. 
So that's it guys, thanks for watching. Uh, it's time for a, a beer and a cold beer and a hot shower. Uh, if this video helped you out, please give me a like and uh, subscribe if you're new.